I'm Ken Anderson uh, from the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and Harvard Medical School, and I'm very honored to be here today with uh, Dr. Irene Gobriel, also from Dana-Farber and Harvard Medical School, and the uh, founder, basically, of multiple myeloma, Dr. Robert A. Kyle, who's a distinguished professor uh, and really a uh, role model for all of us caregivers and patients alike in multiple myeloma. And we're here today to talk about the PROMISE study, a very exciting new initiative that we think is really going to fast forward progress in multiple myeloma. So why don't we start, Irene, and please, can you tell us more about your PROMISE study in terms of what it is and how it works uh, and how patients in particular could enroll in this trial? Absolutely, Ken. And again, it's really an honor to be with both of you, especially with Bob Kyle, who was the first one to describe the word MGAS, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. And the whole idea came from why are we not looking for MGAS in smoldering? We see patients every day and none of them say, I was screened. Yet we go to our doctors and we screen for mammography, for colonoscopy. We never screen with a blood test for multiple myeloma. So this study, the PROMISE study, is really empowering patients to say, can we screen for the first time in the US for multiple myeloma? And it's enrolling 50,000 individuals, healthy individuals who are at risk of developing myeloma. And this is based on being African-American over the age of 40, or if you have a first degree relative with myeloma or Waldenstrom or a monoclonal gammopathy. Okay. So we are indeed privileged to have Dr. Kyle here today because he actually is Irene has said, described monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. And we've often wondered over the years, uh, Bob, um, whether there was a familial preponderance of, of MGUS. And we've known for many years, too, that MGUS is more common, and myeloma, too, in the African-American population. But maybe you could comment on this idea that Irene now is exploring and putting forward of actually screening, having individuals who have a monoclonal gammopathy or myeloma or Waldenstrom and screening them uh, for protein. Or in the African-American population, screening because we know of the higher incidence. What, this hasn't been done before and maybe you could tell us what you think of the potential findings and, and what it might help us uh, learn for and inform patient care in the future. Monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance is a completely asymptomatic condition that occurs in about 3% of persons above the age of 50 years and about 5% in persons above the age of 70 years. As I just mentioned, this is completely asymptomatic and is found only if one looks at the blood and does a test called serum protein electrophoresis, followed by immunofixation to identify the type of monoclonal protein if one is present in the blood. These monoclonal gammopathies can progress to multiple myeloma, primary or AL amyloidosis, and Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia at a rate of 1% per year. Looking at it in a little different uh, uh, direction, 99% of persons who have a, a MGUS or MUGUS will have no progression or any symptoms or any problem with it within the first year. This does continue, as far as we know, indefinitely. We have followed patients for 40 years and this point still holds. In the African American population, the incidence of MGUS is approximately 
twice as high as in uh, Caucasian uh, persons. This is not only multiple myeloma, but also monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. We did a study of almost 1,000 persons from Ghana in Western Africa and found that the rate was indeed twice that in the population studies that have been done on the condition in the Caucasian or white population. Bob, could you tell us about what are the relative risks in family members for having monoclonal gammopathies? If one looks at patients who have a monoclonal gammopathy, the likelihood of, of having a, uh, a MGUS is twice that of a normal population. The first degree relatives are defined as parents, as siblings, brothers and sisters, or children of the person with the monoclonal gammopathy. So it seems as though um, there is an increased risk in first degree relatives, whether they be siblings or parents or children, but this risk is still very low. We will learn in this promised study whether first degree relatives actually have a monoclonal protein. We'll have their ability therefore to be followed over time, but we do want to emphasize the risk of them developing um, a serious disease still is quite low. So this is going to be, uh, Irene, with your leadership, the first ability or the first, if you will, screening test a very large number of patients, 50,000. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the logistics. So if a patient wanted to be involved, they were in the appropriate category. They were a first degree relative of somebody who had a monoclonal gammopathy or they were African American at the higher risk as, as Bob has said. How could a patient actually um, find out more information and number two, potentially enroll in the study? Yeah, absolutely. So again, we're trying to make this very simple and easy. If you go on promisestudy.org and look up if you are eligible or not, you fill a questionnaire. And once you are eligible and you sign consent online on your own, you don't need a physician, you don't need any intermediary people, we will send you a kit that comes to you and you can go to any Quest Diagnostic or any phlebotomist wherever you are and we will pay for this. And the sample goes into two different places. One, it goes to Mayo Clinic where it will have the serum protein electrophoresis done as well as mass spectrometry, which is a new test, a very sensitive test to look for MGUS. And the other sample comes to us at Dana-Farber to see if we can understand better what causes progression. And I think the most important thing that Bob Kyle said today is if someone is positive, when we get the results back and someone is positive, we call them and we've been calling every single patient and we tell them it's important to know that your risk is very, very low and the chance of going on to myeloma is very low, but we want to find those people who will progress in their lifetime to prevent progression, to help them prevent having the fractures in the bones, the anemia, the lithic lesions, the renal failure. If we can have every single patient find out early that they have MGUS and prevent it from going to myeloma, maybe 15, 20 years from now, we will not have myeloma anymore. And that's the hope that we can detect it early, screen for it, and prevent it early so that we do not have patients coming in with kidney failure, with anemia, with fractures in the future. Yeah. So just to highlight those uh, very important points, I think um, number one, it's helping really advance the research into this area because the part of the patient sample that comes to your scientific laboratory for discovery is trying to determine what is the cause of this monoclonal protein. And someday, as Irene said, knowing the factors that may be underlying its development, maybe we can prevent it. 
the really short-term benefit to a patient, uh, individual patient, um, is the fact that they will have this information now. Um, it, they're in a group that's at higher risk for having this monoclonal protein. They will know whether they have it or not, and they in turn then can provide that information to their caregiver and have appropriate follow-up over time. So it's highly likely, as I understand it, that they're going to learn about this much earlier than they probably other would, otherwise would have, and then can have advancement for the research into this area. And there's no one more qualified on earth than you to lead this effort. And they will have this information to have and share with their own caregiver being at low risk for progression, yes, but you know, some of them will be quite young. There's appropriate uh, follow-up that Dr. Kyle has defined over many years, and they'll be able to be followed and appropriately medically managed as well. Is that a fair summary? Absolutely. Thank you, Ken, for putting it together. I think it's important to tell the patients that by being followed carefully, potentially their survival improves, and this has been shown in studies, making sure we have close follow-up of those patients before they develop myeloma. And the other quick question I just ask you, so this we're directly going to be uh, talking to patients, asking them to participate, and are we also um, educating physicians and caregivers, trying to make sure that these docs out there are aware of the study so that they'll actually be willing and very uh, active participants as well? Yes, this is a very important question of, can we tell everyone, can you, when you see your patient, tell them here is a study for the family members who are part of this team. And I think it's truly an effort of a community. This is something we want everyone to be involved, patients, physicians, advocates, telling everyone, please sign up to promisestudy.org and help us understand what causes progression from MGUS to myeloma. Why are African Americans at a higher risk? Can we prevent that from happening? Can we understand familial causes? And can we in the future truly intercept myeloma from happening? Yeah. So I think this is very exciting and maybe I'll just close by saying in other cancers, in, in breast cancer is probably the best example if you have a family member or you're in particular population, Ashkenazi Jewish descent, for example, we screen. We screen to see if you are at risk for developing breast cancer so we can prevent it. But this is the first time in our area, in the area of monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, that a large screening effort is, is really going forward. So it's very exciting and we really hope that you'll be willing to participate help the world at large understand our disease better, but secondly, have information that really will help inform your optimal health care in the future as well.